so we can start right sir yes sir you can start now very good morning to one and all present here gives me an immense pleasure welcoming today's resource person which will be there and then vice president and home assistance team faculty members participants from various institutions to future tonics 21 five days of career opportunities and career opportunities in electronics and communication engineering organized by the department of electronics and communication engineering srm institute of science and technology damapuram campus i welcome you all once again with this note now i request dr vani professor department of electronics and communication engineering to introduce our today's resource person good morning to students parents and participants of today's session i am privileged to introduce guest speaker of the day ms mageshwari dayanandam she completed her ug in electronics and communication kumarugur college of technology bharatiya university in the year 2000 she has did her masters in the field of studies software systems birla institute of technology and science pilani in the year 2004 she has worked in gda technologies chennai as senior hardware engineer the design and development of embedded products for a period of 9 years she have founded the hardware team at econ systems india private limited chennai with a team of engineers and had completed development of several products which are in market now she has started a layout and manufacturing team and also introduced product stream to econ systems she was a head of system on module and services business unit she has 21 years of experience in embedded industry specializing in product development and taking the product to production currently she is vice president product and manufacturing quality at econ systems chennai and responsible for design quality of the product and manufacturing quality on behalf of srm institute of science and technology ramapuram we welcome you ma'am for today's session thank you thank you ma'am now i request ma'am aishwarya ma'am uh, thank you uh, srm team and uh, all teachers i'm i'm delighted to address this team good morning everybody teachers parents and students first of all i'd like to thank the dean HOD sir and entire SRM staff to give me this opportunity to address in behalf of uh, this 12th standard students in behalf of our electronic domain. I'm proud to be in my domain and present that to the students who's going to be a future engineers. Uh, just give me a minute, let me share my screen. So, are you able to see my screen? Yes, I guess sure. Yes, it's visible. Yeah. So, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, Why, ma'am, has given a a very good introduction of mine. Thank you, Vani, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So, I have um, a twenty-one years of experience in the embedded industry, and I started my career as hardware is an engineer i am proud to be a still call as a hardware engineer because i am very passionate about my product designing seeing the product at the in the market i have developed several products of varying complexities so during my career i was fascinated about videos so i i, uh, I involved myself in uh, video streaming video capturing and image processing based on cameras So currently, I'm one of the executive team members running a successful OEM product company called Econ Systems. So when I see you all, I just get reminded of of myself 25 years back, when I was also of your same age, thinking just completed my 12th standard and thinking what kind of course I should choose, what. What course I should choose? Will the course be uh, 
futuristic, how, uh, how beneficial it's going to be for me and how, how am I going to be, have a good career opportunity when I take up this course. So being in this career for quite long, say 20, 20 years, so I feel by stand before you to tell you the benefits of being an electronics engineer and a small guidance to sell, to guidance for you to choose a particular course, right? So the question is, what course should I choose? Uh, funny, I miss that anybody from the audience would be able to answer this, or would they be able to listen and answer to this? They could answer at the end of the session. Anyone interested, they can interpret in between. Okay. Else you can, if, they, if any queries, they could uh, discuss at the end. Okay, I, okay, fine, no problem. So I was like, um, fine. So the first question that all of, our, all of us have in mind right now was what course should I choose? I would, uh, I would recommend uh, rather that you should definitely ask some other question. What do I love to do, really love to do, passionate to do all my life, right? So that is a good question to start with, I would say. So when, when you ask this question, then uh, you would say, why should I, why should that be an important question, right? So let me uh, have a video which explains why should we have this as an, a very important question of our lives. He is considered as the father of digital revolution, a massive innovation and a design perfectionist. He had a net worth of $8 billion in 2010. There is not a single executive or creator in technology industry more important than him. He is one of the most creative and daring CEOs of all time. A global icon who has shaped the rules of technology and media. His products are adored by millions of people across the world. The company that he started in the garage is worth more than $742 billion today. For over 30 years, computers, music, movies and mobile phones have all been transformed by none other than Steve Jobs of Apple. Today, we talk about the fascinating I'm just playing the video. In 1976, when Jobs was just 21 years old, he and his partner Steve Wozniak started Apple Computer. The duo started in Steve Jobs' family garage, funding their entrepreneurial venture by Jobs selling his Volkswagen bus and Wozniak selling his beloved scientific calculator. Jobs and Wozniak are credited with revolutionizing the computer industry by democratizing the technology and making machines smaller, cheaper, intuitive and accessible to everyday consumers. Wozniak conceived of a series of user-friendly personal computers and with Jobs in charge of marketing, Apple initially marketed the computers for $666 each. Initial success with the Apple One pushed Jobs and Wozniak to create bigger and better computers. And by the late 1970s, they had created what would become Apple's first big success, the Apple II, a high-speed business workstation. The computer was a hit in their native California, and Jobs soon became a millionaire from the computer's heavy sales throughout the state and country. However, Things turned sore for Jobs when he sought to expand Apple further, hiring former Pepsi chief executive John Scully to lead Apple in a new direction. The experienced chief executive had no patience for Jobs' controversial and demanding management style, and after two years, they had no time for each other. In a boardroom meeting, Steve Jobs was fired from the company that he founded. His dismissal at Apple ignited a fire in Jobs one that burned for the remainder of his career. Just a year later, 
He purchased a struggling animation studio from Star Wars mastermind George Lucas. It bled money for over 10 years, money that Jobs himself was spending on the studio until it had a fantastic 1997 hit with the movie Toy Story. Likewise, he created another company and called it Next, which specialized in high-end workstations for the business community. However, it was a commercial failure and Next bled money until it was purchased by Apple a decade later, bringing Steve Jobs back to the company that he built. Over the next few years, Jobs went from a small position at Apple to the company's interim CEO and eventually taking on the position full-time. Steve Jobs' second period at Apple produced many of the company's most successful devices. From the iPad to the iMac, the Jobs-led Apple went ahead of its previous milestones and grew into the biggest company in the technology sector. Although it took a heavy blow to set Jobs on the right path, his experience reflects a true genius and is regarded as the greatest second act in business history. However, early in 2009, reports circulated about Jobs' weight loss, some predicting his health issues had returned. Jobs had responded to these concerns by stating that he was dealing with hormone imbalance. After nearly a year out of the spotlight, Steve Jobs delivered a keynote address at an invite-only Apple event on September 9, 2009. 11. Apple sadly announced that its co-founder had passed away. After battling pancreatic cancer for nearly a decade, Steve Jobs died in Palo Alto when he was 56 years old. I was lucky. I found what I loved to do early in life when I was 20. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Keep looking and don't settle. Despite as we are seeing, you cannot settle for something that you don't like. You've got to have, find your dream. You've got to see what you really love, and then go for it, right? As Henry Ford says, a poor man is not the one without a sense. A poor man is the one without a dream. I'm pretty sure that each one of you will have amazing dreams about your future and your future career and how you want to settle down in your professional career that you love the most. Say you have chosen a stream that you actually love the most and then you got to see in the stream what are the career opportunities that you would have to proceed further. So what you can do is just do a list of career opportunities that you have to go forward. Say you created 10 different or 15 different career opportunities that you have in the stream that you love. What you've got to do is analyze each of the career opportunities, look for its pros and cons, what is the benefits, what is that you really love in the job. You can analyze each one of them and you can just reduce and shortlist to a few say two to three of them or four or five of them. So once you have this list, so you've got to acquire a practical knowledge about the job and the career opportunities. Like you can you can do uh, industrial visits or you can do discuss with professionals who are in the field to share their experience. I'm sure most of the professionals are very, would be very, very happy to share their experiences with you so that you get an a complete understanding of the profession before you start your actual first step on your career. So once you have this all opportunities, you have a career which you wanted to proceed. So once the career is chosen, then it's quite easy to choose the actual course, which will which is a step closer to your career. So that is how you got to choose your uh, course. 
So in case, if you choose electronics as your field of interest, so here I come to give you a professional expertise opinion about the growth opportunities, the challenges that you will see, the engagement that you will be with the electronics. So let us see like what is the growth of electronics industry? So how it has grown? So let, uh, let me put one question here. So where is electronics in our day-to-day -day lives, right? So if this is, I would say the audience would think what an absurd question is this. Electronics is everywhere, everywhere I touch there's an electronics. So that is how electronics is omnipresent. So once it is omnipresent, you've got to have opportunities that is endless, right? So let me give you a narrative. Like when you say electronics is everywhere, so where are they? A simple narrative about you going to a school, you going to your school and coming back, right? You get up in the morning, there's an alarm which you wait for your, so, so that's an electronics there, right? So one, once you get up, you brush your teeth. So there are electric toothbrushes which help you brush your teeth. That comes in with the electronics there. Then you have a good cup of coffee. So you that's a coffee maker which helps you make a super coffee, a super filtered coffee. I would love filtered coffee here. So and I'm just then you have your bed, you have your heater to heat your water. You have nice hot bath, you are freshened up, then you're ready to go, then you start your breakfast. Yeah. So when you have breakfast, then you have your toaster to be uh, to do sandwiches, you have induction stove to do whatnot. Everything that you want, it can be done by induction stove. You have electric chimney for exhaust. So there come electronics in every of these devices. So then you go to your bus, school to your school bus. So when you when in the school bus, it's an automobile. The basic human indications are given by our electronics. Speedometer, which gives the speed of the bus. A fuel gauge, which indicates how much fuel is there on the in the bus. So these electronics that is already there in the, in the school bus, there are a lot more are added, which I'm not bringing in right now. So you have reached your school. So once you reach your school, you have your attendance system, which might be a fingerprint, or you have an access control through which so that becomes an electronic. You have printers to print your circulars. You have smart classrooms, wherein there's a lot of video coming in through the internet itself and showing yourself. So you're coming back. So you have your super good gaming consoles. With which you work, with which you play and enjoy your time. Then you have your good old TV. Here again comes a lot of electronics. So then you go for a sleep after dinner, right? So for sleep, you would definitely need a minimum of a fan and a mosquito repellent. And if not more air conditioner. So there comes a lot of electronics in built. So it's electronics is everywhere. Everywhere we see electronics. Right. So where was the electronics 20 years back and how it is now? A simple comparison. Just so we had 20 years back a good old Nokia phone. You would never forget this phone. This this is a, a dream phone 20 years back that everyone would like to have in their, in their hands, right? So now nobody would like to have no Nokia 3310. They would love to have smartphones, right? With all things embedded inside band. You, you, it's a TV by itself, it has alarm clocks, it has what not, it has everything, right? It, it, is, it, it is a laptop or it is a world in itself. You have tablets, which was not that 20 years back. Yeah. So now a five-year-old kid is attending his school classes with, tab with tablets. And with tablet, and they know much more than what today's parents know about the tablet. They just hang around it, poke around it, know everything in, this, uh, in the tablet. And that's it. So 
is a new generation with this pandemic, right? With all this gadget coming up. Without this gadget, without this digitization, without the electronics behind it, this pandemic, you have lost a lot of things. So this is what the electronics has given us. You have a lot of 3D printing technology improvements coming up. You can print whatever you want, whatever structure you want. It, the 3D printer helps you print it. And you can see the shape, size, functioning of the product, just like that. You have industrial cobalt, which has improved the lifestyle and removed all monotonous work in industry. So it does all the monotonous work in the industry, thereby giving more accuracy, more repeatability, more quality in the industrial world, and thereby improving the lifestyle of mankind in the industries. So now we have everything smart, right? Smart. So we have smart buildings, smart cities, smart grid, right? The smart building, you have uh, conference rooms booked. It opens once somebody enters, it switches on the lights if somebody is there. And if, if the conference is over, when somebody closes the door, the light switches off. And there's a surveillance that happens in the entire floor. As far as smart city is concerned, there's a lot of parking issues. It is getting solved using smart parking. So everything is getting smart. And so we are. And our good old ATM machines, how, what will we do with like all cash in our bags? We don't have ATMs, which can have given us credit and debit cards, and we don't have anything on our, on our uh, purse or wallet, just our cards. That will alone will do the do the magic. We can take money what whenever we want, how much ever we want. So a small uh, a breakdown of say um, health monitoring system, a small smartwatch or a small health monitoring device, which is going to just uh, give the health bits of you to uh, to your smartphone. Right. So it has a simple controller which just connects to a, temp a temperature sensor which measures, uh, which measures the temperature of your body and it communicates to the controller. The controller again communicates through UART, which is a serial interface to a Wi Fi module. From the Wi Fi, it gets connected to your internet as and your port or wherever you want. So by then you monitor all the health parameters that you want to do for your near and dear ones, say temperature, your heartbeat, your ECG. You can just keep adding on whatever sensors you want. You would definitely find a device that is available in the market. Or even you can do one using Arduino. I've, I have seen well-studded kits in their uh, science exhibition using Arduino kits to do a lot of automation. It was really, really nice to see it. kids doing that. So something like that is such an interface, such a device. So we have seen till today, we have seen how, what we are, what is the electronics before us. So let us see like how, what is the growth of electronics beyond 2021? In a global market insights, a renowned research institute has predicted the global market, electronic market value in 2013. In 2018, it is $285 billion, right? So now what the projection is in 2030, three zero, the global market value is going to be $645 billion only for the electronics in the automotive industry alone. With the electric vehicles coming up and catching us up, with hybrid uh, cars coming up, electric vehicles coming up, with car infotainments adding it, adding to it, with electronics for every uh, mechanical positions, electronics is added to it so that it becomes smart. You, did, you have driver dose detection. A lot of things is getting added to the automotive. 
So this automotive electronics industry is going to grow tremendously big. And that is what is predicted as $645 billion. So another industry, industrial automation. So industrial automation, like we have seen in the previous slide about cobots, which has automated the way a particular monotonous activity is done in the industrial environment. So currently we have we are seeing the market value as 168 billion dollars, which is going to grow to 326 billion dollars by 2027. So it's a large of growth opportunity in just industrial automation alone. I just quoted a couple of fields, and if you just name any field, I would say, say in medicine, you have a lot of things being getting added. You you are you have electronic devices that has been developed just to detect say a specific disease, say a typhoid or a malaria, or any specific devices been developed. We, can, we have even seen COVID scanners, which you just don't see, uh, which you don't touch anybody. You may not touch anybody. You just have to uh, show your camera in, in front of uh, any person entering a mall or an office. Then you just test with uh, the electromagnetic uh, radiations that a human can give. It, it is going to be very less, but with that, we are able to identify if is a COVID positive or negative. So that is the that is the rate of growth in the industrial electronics research. So with all with this all that is already happening, there's a lot more to come. So I'm just giving a small a few technologies that is going to be ruling the world. So automated guided vehicles. So let me uh, tell you like, what is this automated guided vehicles is all about? So automated guided vehicles is nothing but, say if you're, uh, for example, in, in a warehouse, you have a lot of forklift machines, which is used to just take a goods from one place and just move it to another, another place in the inside the warehouse or to a delivery truck. Or if you have an incoming goods coming in, you pick up the uh, goods from the teller, from the truck and keep it in a specific place. So these are all forklift machines, which is just actually handled by humans. So now when it becomes an automated guided vehicle, it is like you don't need a human there, wherein you just add a GPS to the forklift machine. So when you add GPS to the workload, uh, to the forklift machine, it just goes to the delivery truck, it picks up the groups, and you have programmed it to move to a specific location. It has to place the goods in a specific rack. It just goes and takes in the specific rack. So the job is done, right? So this, this kind of monotonous job, which is again and again done, is, being, is getting replaced. So by then, improving the quality of the human life, when you say last minute delivery, we have a lot of um, Amazon parcels coming in on the, say we have ordered something at Amazon. So it comes to a hub, a nearby hub, and from that hub, it has to come to our home. So when you say last minute delivery, this is the last segment that needs to, wherein from the hub, it reaches our home. There are research going on, products getting developed in this last minute delivery, wherein it picks up from the hub and it delivers to the home. And when you say airport mobility service is nothing but like say if we have our grandma or grandpa, they had to travel in the airport. There are uh, wheelchairs which a person has to carry or move manual through all uh, all the hurdles or all the security checks, then go to the air, uh, airplane and go there. But there are wheels which is available where when you, 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 it starts from the car, your car, your grandma or grandpa can just sit in there and tell where, which terminal they had to go. The chair takes them through all the security checks through and to the terminal without any help. So that is the airport mobility service that is being offered. It is, it is already under deployment in, in the Japan market. So 
embedded vision. See, this is one of, like, I would say, a key factor in getting a lot of things automated. Embedded vision is nothing but it has given eyes, I would say, it has given eyes to the machine. So the machine can see what we see. Hypothetically, of course, it uh, human eyes are, uh, it cannot be uh, just replaced with the normal ca cameras. But yes, we have cameras which has given vision to the machines. So there are spe specific purposes for this vision, right? So when you may fix a vision to say this airport mobility service or your warehouse robot, what it does is, it just navigates, right? It, so it navigates through basically not to hit anybody. It just maneuvers and just move forward and places at the right place without hitting. Say, uh, say uh, a focus machine is moving and it and uh, if you come just opposite to where, it, it, cannot, it cannot hit you, right? So it has to maneuver, just move out of you and then move forward. So that kind of object recognition controls it gives. So embedded vision is also used in one of the other important areas, optical optical inspection, say, and, and control, and the, basically a quality control. Say you have a biscuit manufacturing, uh, manufacturing place where biscuits are getting manufactured. So that should be a quality control to check if the biscuits are of right shape, if there's a, a good quality, and it has all the logos built in. So, those kind of things, this particular embedded vision, these cameras can look into it, check if, uh, if every of this biscuit is uh, on the shape with that control with right thickness. So all things can be checked and then allowed for packing. So for edge computing. So edge computing, what do you mean by edge? Then when you say something's edge, you say you have something on the cloud. So everybody knows what is cloud. Cloud is something uh, like, say, you take a picture in your iPhone and it it, it gives, uh, you directly post it on the iCloud so that it directly goes and places there and you're not dependent on your iPhone itself, even if it is getting lost. All your data is safe in your cloud. So that is a place where it is stores and computes the data, but it's not on the device. It, it's not in your hands, right? It's not, that is not on the, so some device that is in your hand doing or in uh, in the place, in the location to do a specific job is what they call as edge computing. So in traffic, it is uh, broadly used in traffic management, wherein say the, tra the traffic, there's a lot of variation in traffic. So people compute and uh, the number of seconds, you have to have a green, you have to have red, is all computed based on a lot of data taken uh, for a signal. So when the traffic management is software is deployed, so what happens is the, the software runs on the uh, platform in the, tra in the traffic management system. It computes, it sees how the, the vision sees how the traffic is going, if the traffic that changes the traffic. Accordingly, it changes the green, red, seconds, the number of seconds it has, the light has green number of seconds, the light has to be red, right? So there's a measurement automation, which is broadly used in logistics to measure the boxes and the patient monitoring system. Say uh, you have to monitor the patient, right? But, uh, the, the patient monitoring device, what it does is it monitors the critical parameters on the patient. And it even predicts to see if the, if the indications are not good, right? So it can even intimate earlier, earlier than the actual patient actually becomes critical. So then, then uh, doctors can come and uh, give medicines accordingly and recover the patient before they are becoming critically ill. So a life-saving device, right? So even then it is not inside the patient or it's not actually giving any medicine to the patient, it just monitors but it is definitely life saving, right? So, augmented reality, another fantastic uh, technology, I would say. You have goggles, you have, uh, you just, it just well, it sits on your eyes and you just see the world in it, right? So, that is how 
you you it, it transports yourself to wherever you want say you want that is what this virtual tourism is all about say you want to uh, visit taj mahal sitting there in your uh, in your home is amazing right you just visit taj mahal you see whatever you got to see and then come back or you want to visit niagara falls just go there visit and then come back this is wonderful in, uh, really in this pandemic this is going to be a wonderful option for tourism then you have live lively online shopping wherein you can uh, say you order some dress on amazon or any uh, any any website for that matter you would not know until it reaches you how it looks on you so you can this with this software augmented reality it allows you to see like if you want to purchase that the how the dress looks on you you can uh, you can just put the dress online and just see it just puts on on you and just gives you an experience like how it looks so it gives a very lively online shopping experience so that you just buy what you really love and look good right so it takes up gaming to another level where when you see your all your uh, uh, enemies or whatever you want to play right in front of you and you have a splendid experience playing the game so for every of the technology you got to have the hardware running all this algorithms all the devices has to be connected everything is possible only if you have the electronics in the background and all our internet is running so beautifully just because we have servers running in the background we have a lot of data centers backing up the data in the background so everything behind we have a lot of electronics so we have hardware and we have a software hardware i would say is the body and the software is the heart beat so without both together there's nothing called life in the electronics right so you need to have both so that is where is that is what is hardware and software is all about so i would not i would not be completing if i don't touch artificial intelligence right so ai is a buzzword that and everyone wants to know what is ai and what i can do with ai right so ai is nothing but in very simple language i would say it's a very small intelligence that is that is your add to a machine so that it works smarter than how it is actually working let me give you small, small examples like when you say uh, surveillance everybody knows what is surveillance right you just fix a camera say in the lobby in office lobby you have a camera and you, and a security is supposed to watch the camera all the time so a security has a lot of other tasks to do so you might not uh, watch the cameras even if watching cameras is all time job there'll be 10 15 cameras which he might miss to see say some critical security threats right say if that camera is able to detect say some security changes or a, a pattern difference in somebody walking in or something so if it can detect that and give an alarm to the security so that is changing surveillance to the next level right so it's not that a security needs to watch all the cameras all the time right which is definitely a monotonous job and everybody would tend to skip a few of things right so then billing automation you just purchase everything put it on your card you you know, it just bills that and then you just take it on a, a bag and keep everything and just move on rather than waiting on the queue so billing automation right saves a lot of time smart parking so we have a lot of parking problems with space being a constraint right so when you have smart parking so what is actually targeted as a specific location is being marked right so it is marked not physically it it is marked for the particular and it is sold outside so you can book the for car parking you can go keep your car there say you can book the car park car parking for 2 hours finish your work take the car back and go so these kind of smart parking options are available where you can book and then go rather than wait in the queue to actually park your car 
say you just uh, do a speed and you have a speed ticket, you just cross the red uh, red signal without red signal without stopping, then maybe you have cameras there which you actually recognize is your number plate and you can send a fine to your home, right? So these kind of intelligence is being added, a small intelligence being added a network so that uh, it's for a la larger purpose of action, right? So for everything for it to act, you need electronics. So electronics, say in the traffic control, you have the camera and you record and you just see that somebody is moving past the red signal, right? So that is a detection mechanism that's happening on the edge and you just check, collect the exactly the number plate alone and send the number plate to the processing place wherein they do the rest of the job of sending the fine to the particular person. So let us see what kind of job opportunities and growth do we have in the electronic space. So in electronic field, you can start your career as IC designers or FPG engineers when you add in your VLSI design to it. And you can you can start as a hardware design engineer or a networking engineer, or you can even be a scientist at this job. So this is just the start of your career. Moving forward, what you become is up to you actually. So you can even become a director of product engineering or a director of product LD. You can be a VP of a specific division, or you can be a CEO of a company. Right? What limits you? There's nothing going to limit you in your growth. You can even start your own company. You can become an entrepreneur. So climbing to the top demands strength, whether it is the top of Mount Everest or top of your careers is the, our late president, Dr. Abdul Kalam. So climbing to the top of the career is definitely is in your hands. So what products you can develop? You can develop any, any product starting from smart cameras or processing engines or say smart watches, mobile phones, any industrial controls. You can even do an AA chip. Categorizing to a variety of domains from surveillance, retail, medical, healthcare, industrial automation, retail automation, what not. You can develop products just automating everything. So there are so many companies in the world by which you can enter into. I've just put a few. So what kind of challenges as a graduate engineer trainee you would see when entering into a company like any of these companies? I would say challenges on you and I would say expectations from the company, right? So when you do anything on your work, right? So you, the company expects you to have a complete understanding of the design. Only if you have a complete understanding of the design, you will really like your product. So, so when you uh, just have a complete understanding of the design and you start solving problems, you say, for example, you have created your own product. You have started testing, you have seen some problems and you have your customer delivery also, right? So you really don't have enough time. You might not have time or you might have enough time, right? But you have to solve problems at a seriously short period of time. You've got to be innovative in resolving all the technical issues that you're seeing with a limited resource availability, but there's no compromise in the quality and the reliability of the product. So I would say all electronics engineers are like Brahmas of electronics. So they create the product. So they are the Brahmas of the product. That is how I call my engineers at my office, right? So you can be proud of a Brahma of a particular product. So there's another sector wherein you can enter as an electronics engineer in manufacturing, right? So you design your product, but only if you manufacture in mass volume, it gets available in the market for others to use. So in manufacturing, there are several opportunities like a process engineer. So as a process engineer, you can define each stage, how, it, how a product is getting manufactured. 
every stage can be defined accurately by the man manufacturing process engineer. And automation, as an automation engineer, what you can do is you can automate every of this process so that it is very accurately done with the quality. You can be a test engineer who strategizes test, how the test is being conducted, how you actually functionally test the product and ensure that all the sections of the product, all the circuits has already tested. As a quality engineer, you ensure like everything is done correctly at every stage so that the quality is not compromised at any stage on the production line. You can start your career in the manufacturing of any of these profiles and you can grow to, as you can see, uh, you can be a head of plant operations, you can be a VP of manufacturing operations, running the whole manufacturing company. You can even start your own backing line or a complete manufacturing company and send and ship products. So I just uh, put a few of the manufacturing companies which is there in India. So it can be done, you can enter into any of these companies. So what are the challenges is basically in the manufacturing industry is time. When you say time, it's the number of quantity of products that is tested and completed and shipped and packed in the period of time. So the time to complete one product production is very, very critical so that you can ship huge quantities of product in a one hour of time. But quality is never a compromise here. So how much short the time you take the quality is always very good. It's 100% on quality within time. This is the mantra in manufacturing. So what benefit actually you get? When you finish electronics and you have your job in electronics, you have a great job satisfaction. You see, you have chosen a career, you have chosen a stream, you study electronics and just work on it. So that is a great job satisfaction that you get. And a great intellectual development. It's an ongoing industry. You, you learn every day. So there's a lot of intellectual activity happening, right? So then it comes your financial security for yourself and your family. And when you see your products that are designed or manufactured by you in the, the field, you, you get a sense of pride, right? You, can, you get a sense of pride and you tell your family as well. And they are also very happy about seeing your product, you, your father can say, see, this is the product my son has developed. See, he can show to any of his friends. It's a great sense of pride that gives you and your family. By then you improve the lifestyle of the society. You improve the lifestyle and you, you take them to the next level. So do you want to have a successful future? No. What an absurd question, right? Who don't want? Everybody wants a successful future. A small qualities, I would say, is required for that. A complete understanding, a complete understanding of whatever you design, whatever, whatever work you do, and whatever you deliver. And whatever you understand, that is what you deliver. So a complete understanding of what you work, and what you deliver, what is the expectations is definitely necessary. A great author, Robin Sharma, says, why hide your, your talent in the process of complacency when you have greatness within you? Right? you? On your initial success, if you have, if you become complacent, then the complacency is going to kill you. So no complacency. complacency. So go to the extra mile. Take an extra mile in whatever activity you're doing. Develop a habit of going an extra mile in whatever activity you do. It's very, very important. That, that is where you leave your footprints in the work that you do. Constant learning. So anyone, as Henry Ford says, Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at the age of 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning always stays young. So the greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. So let us stay young, develop great products, 
So let us see like what our late president, Dr. Abdul Kalam has to say, what success mantra actually he gives. Particularly you are in the management environment, Vartan. It, I want the young people to understand how to manage the failure. Because any task you do, you have to come across problem. Problem should not become the captain of the individual or the project chief. The project chief should become the captain of the problems and defeat the problem and succeed. Learning, learning gives creativity. Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge. Knowledge makes you great. History has proven, history has proven that those who dare to imagine the impossible are the ones who break all the human limitations. In every field of human endeavor, whether science, medicine, sports, arts or technology, the names of the people who imagine the impossible are engraved in our history. By breaking the limits of their imagination, by breaking their limits of their imagination, they change, they change the world. You take C.V. Raman, you take uh, Newton, you take Einstein, you take Chandrasekhar, they, by breaking the limits of their imag imagination, they change the world. If you want to be discoverers, if you want to be innovators, I am going to give you what type of, uh, what type of characteristic you must have. Invention and discoveries have emanated from creative minds that have been constantly working and imagining the outcome, the telephone, he was imagining the outcome, imagining the outcome in the mind. With the imaging and constant effort, all the forces of the universe work for that inspired mind, thereby leading to invention discoveries. Sir, I would like to hear from you a few tips for the upcoming generation to succeed in life. Well, succeeding life, I have already told you. Yes, sir. You all have to do four things, okay? Number one, great aim. Great aim. I will have great aim. I will have great aim. I will. I will. Continuously acquire knowledge. Continuously acquire knowledge. Oh, I will do hard work. I will do hard work. I will persevere. I will persevere. And succeed. And succeed. Okay, that's the mandra. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You have many accomplishments. You've written books. So that. So can I uh, have some questions? You have any questions? You're free, free to ask. Uh, students, if you have any questions. Ma'am, I guess no questions from the student side. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation.
and joining with us today in sharing the in sharing your experience in the field of uh, electronics starting from what was electronics before and what is electronics today and what will be the upcoming technologies of electronics and you have given you have also given the job opportunities of electronics which is more focused on recent advancements in industrial electronics thank you so much ma'am once again for accepting our invitation and uh, with this note now i request uh, dr vani ma'am Ma'am. Ah, yes, ma'am. And Dr. Vani, Professor, Electronics and Communication Engineering, to give the presentation on scope of image processing. Yes, I'll share the PPT. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sonali? Yes, ma'am, she has started sharing. Yes, 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 fine. Yes. Just make it to full screen. Yes. So good morning, students and parents for today's session. So here I would like to discuss on scope of image processing. And myself, Dr. R. Bani, professor working in EC department, SRMISP Ramapuram. So to go with the overview of the presentation, I'll be discussing what is digital image, followed by what is image processing, transformation, requirements, opportunities, application, and conclusion. So here you could see that in this slide, you have seen a, in a picture or a photograph, which is an example which could be said as an image. And so here, any kind of image that to be processed using algorithms or any techniques or any transformations that could be done so that we could extract a feature from this image or uh, anything we could uh, uh, go with the next stage of application uh, that transformation and software requirements will be discussed in coming slides. Next slide. To start with what is image processing and video processing, so we need to know the difference in the terminologies image and video. So here we come to the definition of image processing. It's defined as any form of signal processing for which our input is an image that has photographs or frames of video and our output can be either an image or a set of characteristics or parameters related to the image. So in this statement, we have three terminologies. One is signal, image, and video. So when it comes to signal, here we could see that the input, uh, here it's an, our input, input will be an image and that, that will be re referred as the input signal and that is being processed using any of the algorithms or any transformations required. And when it is video, the image and video are different terminologies. When it is image, it is a still picture. And when it comes to video, it will be referred as a sequence of frames or sequence of pictures that is, that is otherwise referred as moving pictures. And when it comes to image processing, here it refers to processing of a two-dimensional picture. And when you say it is a digital image, it could be said as digital when it is processed in the forms of zeros and ones. So here we could define the digital image as an array of real or complex numbers repre represented by a finite number of bits. So here you could see bits, which is nothing but binary digits. So here any input image should be digitized at the first step where we when we know that everything has been changing as a digital world. It is digitized and then processed. So when you hear a name digitized, which means it is converting into zeros and ones. So that is why it is referred as a process of conversion of an image in terms of bits, otherwise called as binary digits. So here you could see one slide, one picture where we have divided the image into blocks. Otherwise, here we have one terminology referred as pixel. Pixel means itself the expansion is picture elements. That is, every information in an image will be divided into blocks and then processed. So the pictorial information contained in every block has to be processed where it is here it is referred as pixel. 
so the physical image processing itself will have two tasks to be performed one is improvement of pictorial information for human interpretation and the other is processing of image data for storage transmission and representation for autonomous machine perception that is the machine itself cannot understand what what sort of coding is done so the control of the data from our end or from the user will be done Uh, by converting or processing the images that has been captured so that the machine can operate autom- automatically so this pixel information otherwise uh, will be processed bit by bit so as i mentioned here we need to convert the whole image or whole picture into uh, bits as i as i said before here the pixels otherwise referred as pixel elements and here you could see one A diagram which is a four cross four matrix which is referred as a still picture and which is been converted into bits zeros and ones so here you could see the all four corners are red pixels and that is been represented as 110 which is been remaining same in the all four corners so any image or any picture what to be done is we need to convert them into bits zeros and ones and then uh, before conversion what to be done is we need to divide them uh into rows and columns of pixels so this capturing part will be done by camera via a digital sensor that captures a picture with light and then it converts into digital signal so we, as 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 it is converted uh, here we could see that uh, this four cross four picture is having uh, an equal number of rows and columns but it needn't be an equal number of rows and columns for any processing since when it comes to video the content of the uh, frame or image will be varying from frame to frame that is uh, since it is a moving content uh, the images will have different kind of information so the always it need it needn't be uh, the image of equal frame size four cross four it could be either in 16 cross 16 or 16 cross 8 or 8 cross 8 or 4 cross 8 as ever we like depending on the application so here we could see that it is uh, 16 cross 16 and the three bits are being used uh, for representing the information in pixels which varies from 000 till 111 which when converted to binary which, uh, decimal which means it is 0 till 7 so moving to the next slide so we need to discuss about the algorithms that has to be processed the uh, when it comes to algorithms here we go with uh, transformation so the first one is visualization where we need to observe the objects that are not visible suppose when we take a pic or a photograph we will just see uh, uh, will just certain features of the image we need to zoom in and see so that it will be visible it will appear more visible so de- depending on visualization it is difficult to uh, judge an image whether it is uh, been properly processed or not so uh, for a better visualization what we need to do is we need to go for image sharpening and smoothening techniques uh, otherwise uh, any type of transformations that could be adopted suitably so that we could uh, restore the image uh, in a proper manner so here image sharpening or smoothening uh, whatever applications we need to perform on an image that could be done by the usage of filters so you know that what are the uh, what uh, what different kind of filter filters are available or uh, you could have come across some low low pass filters high pass filters so all those filtering aspects could be done for an image so that either a sharpening of an image or a smoothening of an image is possible so that uh, when you finally visualize we could uh, get the uh, appropriate image as uh, in the format of better visualization so these process of transformation or uh, whatever algorithms we could use so as to create a better image and the next transformation that could be done is image retrieval or uh, image uh, removal uh, when it is image removal which means that uh, when uh, when we need to transmit an image from one end to another end what happens when it's been passes through the channel uh, we'll have the option uh, we'll have the uh, noise occurrence so that noise occurrence should be removed Uh, and that is referred as image removal or some disturbance or some dots whatever you see you see in photographs when you zoom in you can see sometimes black dots so those dots uh, otherwise referred as disturbances in a picture which will which will uh, 
affect the quality of the scenario so what to be done is we need to remove them uh, so that that could be done by means of again by the usage of proper uh, filters and the next one is uh, we need to go with the seek for the image of interest suppose this uh, this is based on the application that is uh, when we need when we go for a uh, biomedical application or we go with an input as an x ray image what we need to do is we need to focus on a particular portion of an image so that to be better if you want to uh, focus the regions of interest where it has to be uh, diagnosed and that particular portion alone we could uh, zoom in or process so that uh, the diagnosis could be done in a, a better way and the next is measurement of patterns sometimes what we need, what we do is uh, we will be visualizing an image with a different set of patterns so here we, the pattern is suppose we take it, uh, take up an example as a square shape or a rectangle shape what we need to do is we need to analyze the number of suppose we need to count the number of uh, uh, pattern specific pattern in image that is also possible by the process of image processing and uh, the next possibility is if we could also measure various objects in an image suppose uh if it is a car race we need to track uh, track the event of uh, car in every frame of an image uh, for every frame of a video and that is also possible by the process called as estimating the motion from frame to frame so by uh, in order to track certain objects in an image or in a video sequence and uh, that is also possible by processing uh, any kind of images at the front end of the uh, camera and the last time kind of transmission is the image recognition uh, which will also distinguish the objects of an image that is uh, when we, uh, when we go with certain applications as biometric or facial recognition what could be done is uh, certain features could be extracted uh, and that could be uh, gone with the suitable application so here you could see uh, some of the applications the uh, related to the image processing that is one is face reduction the next is speech reduction the next is medical image processing as i already mentioned the next is microscopic image processing remote sensing and fingerprint uh, recognition that is the first one you could see that it's a face detection uh, where we uh, use this as an uh, attendance attendance purpose in many of the schools and organizations and companies uh, which could be done either by using a biometric uh, means or otherwise by using by capturing the retinal image so these kind of uh, uh image capturing at the front end is also being processed by the uh, methodologies which we, which will be used, which will be uh, discussed under the image processing uh, subject and uh, the next example is by capturing the signatures the, that is also will be acting as one image uh, microscopic image processing is also possible and when it's remote sensing the input image has to be an uh, either it could be an uh, satellite based images or any remote Uh, images which could be used for a uh, tele telecasting of uh, the video stream or it could be used for any broadcasting of images so all these live examples what we see in day to day scenario is also one application to what we come under image processing and that we could highly related to the subject so next few of the applications uh, we could visualize in the uh, next slide So here you could see the first one is uh, feature recognition or sorry face recognition. As we see that the different uh, expressions in the face that could be also identified uh, from the image feature extraction technique. And the next is inserting an artificial uh, object into a scenario. Otherwise, it could be an uh, uh, human activity recognition. Otherwise, we could interpret any aerial photography or it could be an uh, uh da, that is in if it is an uh, uh, that is in a pcb circuit it is it is also easy to find out which part of the ig is been not working so that kind of technology is also can be used by means of uh, this image processing technique and here you could see uh, the, all these aspects could be achieved in the combination of both software as well as hardware uh, as when i mean as the hardware we are supposed to use image sensors and image proper display and uh, the processing of the uh, the, uh, the uh, methodology could be done by means of software and uh, here we'll be using either an open cv matlab or python software 
and all these facilities been available in the laboratories uh, now since it is going online the students are also using these facilities in the open so open source tools or uh, they are in the free pla open source pla platform in a, or in the virtual lab so that the concepts of algorithm part is been easily understood so when it comes to hardware pair uh, the curriculum also sub supports the concept of both software and hardware so when it is software part as i said uh, the concepts will be dealt in the algorithms and as well as when uh, the, so the basic of this subject or the scope to understand the scope of image processing uh, the basic will be covered in second year of part of the curriculum uh, which will be discussed in under digital electronic principles and signal system so all the subject course here you could see some with c and other ending with j course j course here it refers to each unit of the syllabus as mentioned in the srm curriculum will have uh, been covered with experiments in the same unit so that the student can easily understand the concept in the better way so that is how the curriculum is been designed with the help of uh, academicians as well as the industrial person so that uh, to the technology level the student can easily understand or visualize the concepts whatever been taught theoretically so that uh, it's been understood in a better way and in the third year part of the curriculum we also have the microprocessor microcontroller and interfacing techniques along with digital signal processing and digital image and video process all these been subjects been covered in uh, third year curriculum third year part of the uh, curriculum so that uh, in addition to uh, software requirements or uh, any algorithm and processing part the students can understand in a better way by implementing in the hardware that is vlsa tech vlsa design if they wanted to make it as a final product they, they should deploy that uh, in an hardware kit example an fpga board can also be used so that part of the course uh, the courses are dealt in vlsa design subject as a part of curriculum in srm so this is how the subject been analyzed and uh, the the students will also take over in second and third year so when they come to final year they could easily take up the project or they could uh, they are from the second year onwards itself they can go with innovation contest internship project competitions publications and symposium conferences as well as they can also go with uh, uh, aspects of placement when it comes to final year and all these concepts when as they are learning in uh, software and hardware a combination that will also help them to take over uh, any courses in their higher studies and uh, to make up this possible uh, the all these events uh, yeah, competitions as well as to participate in conference or to make the publications possible so what is done along with the curriculum is we have the uh, club activities and society activities that is dip club is uh, digital image processing club and iea institution of engineers india these are only i am mentioning only few of the club and uh, societies there are many such clubs to go with the subjects and outside the curriculum as well as so that the technology to the date is been covered by by the, for the students uh, by the uh, by the uh, department so that the student also go and participate in the other contest and uh, they go with the winning stage also so here i have shared one poster Uh, where our uh, students of third year ec students have uh, won in uh, new gen iedc project contest and they have uh, got a cash prize of 60000 plus uh, for taking up a project in video compression technique and as i mentioned the club uh, and the societies also support the uh, conduction of events such as guest uh, lectures seminars uh, and uh, workshop and other events been conducted so that the student can understand the concepts in a better way so in continuation of this slide the next slide will will show the events that has been conducted so here you could see the, these are the few events that has been conducted beyond the curriculum every semester along with the courses we study and uh, here i have listed very few events uh, since it's online we have conducted more than these events in the due course that is uh, smart uh, one such example is smart wearable technology and uh, so the other one is uh, biomedical engineering and whatever applications we go with that is also possible when it is conducted as workshops and seminars uh, to the students along with that we also organize symposiums and, and part of it as a conference 
so that the students also get their innovation innovative ideas as a part of the contest and they also participate as well as public as well as, well as do their publications when it comes to uh, second year onwards so here we could see that we have tie up with uh, many industries so that uh, the industrial point of view or industrial approach or industrial perspective has been understood by the student uh, when when it comes to uh, placement or higher studies so that will support them in the next step so that they could uh, achieve their uh, dreams as further so in continuation of this i would also invite one of the, one of my student uh, ms jasrin uh, sonali who has participated in protocon contest and they have also won a cash prize and uh, and they have did a project under uh, seed certification using artificial intelligence and she will also explain you how the curriculum supports students to take up oppor opportunities in electronics and communication engineering yes just send sonali so here you could see a poster where the management has congratulated the students so that uh, the for their for their active participation in the rotathon contest uh, for the project seed certification and just send sonali will continue the session now Yes, Sonali. Sonali, your voice is not audible, ma'am. Sonali. Can you hear me now, ma'am? Ah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Now it's not audible. good evening everyone good morning everyone hi guys i hope everyone are doing fine i thank dr vani ma'am for allowing me to give my experience in srm ist ramapuram particularly from ec department i'm ajay shron sonali currently pursuing my btech in srm particularly in ec department in this end of this orientation you will get a clear idea how you are going to choose a career how many opportunities are there to excel in ec department before let's see over What we have begun and we did even, but hours, weeks, months, years we spent preparing for it. The virtual visible performance itself is merely the demonstration of the championship characters. This was said by Alan Armstrong. As the poll suggests, champions will be building within a single day or a single night itself. So when you are going as a when you are entering into the college, that's a in four years you will be seeing yourself as somewhere or in a position where you can't match that is what championship now during spanning i have reporting myself in many competition on a hackathon so one of the hackathon this was my first and foremost hackathon where i participated virtually it's like a 36 hackathon it was organized by National Institute Centers and Oracle under the aegis of Minister of Electronics and Information Technology on 1st November 2020. Normally, it was we shortlisted as among 47 players, and we had entered into top 20 and made it to level three. And it's like an online guided by centers organized by IEEE itself. They were just entire being a support, and they were. giving us a separate panel in zoom meeting also will be discussed so the next hackathon i participated is agri hackathon on 2021 it was organized by icr in the agriculture the national conference 8000 participants has uh, uh, participated in this event and the objectives were and the was to provide a solution for our farmers which our farmers are constantly facing you can see in many news also so that we want a, a good solution to bring a uh, better notion for our Innovations of investing in crows and crows. So, in order to minimize it, so in order to uh, give it in a less amount, so that it will be easier and the cost of the product also will be easier. So the third one was in Sumba Hackathon. It was held in March, I guess, 
and we got in and it was for particularly for entrepreneurs and small business and for entrepreneurs also our college is supporting a innovation center so we'll get into the college and our idea has been appreciated and we have been selected as top 5 product development and we were awarded as gold value certificate and final one we participated for rotate not it's like a six month online hackathon it was started in october and it was like a screening process until it was march and on the time got into final stage on april and we were continuously maintained by the management and even from that rotate thorn mentors we were continuously mentoring and so that on may 9 2021 we able to won the first prize in this contest but assessment of a picture and we had won like cash prize as well as many subscriptions one year subscription so should show when you are not uh, able to win failure is a part of success once you started get some or other of the for this and all for this competition you require a strong team a mentor and a proper effect team choosing team is very important because without team we can't even go further ahead so up uh, internships this was the internships i think my first internship application test internships had but was a internship how i got means was doing these lectures about faculty members engineering actually one week two weeks once like that so from that we are a internship course Got inspired by about cyber security and this was a teacher. So I got into that Indian service. And the second one was once you completed one internship from a reputed company, that means if you know to apply the technology, what you learn during the internship, it's like This internship was I got because of interest because it inspired my work application and tested. Then the second two was it won my interest because I have interest in content and management writing. And the third one was for shortlist on doing as undergoing internship in the College of Engineering Technology, Chennai. So apart from our schools and the not in Only subject focus. It is us to many platforms. Like if you are interested in particular knowledge, or if you are interested in special, like some will be interested in designing, some interested in AI robot like that. Curriculum is not in that platform. So, and it is either you many platforms or platforms, retail, these, I am even Amazon challenge. You can choose available. Courses or a platform, an international platform. Individuals go for taking sports will be have to pay like three k or around three k. But our management has been giving free of access so that you can take many things in that to enter your skills. And NPTEL it's an uh, organized platform. It was actually. and yes and ma'am can you hear me ma'am so sonali yes yes can you hear me but, right um, but slide is yes. what happened ah uh, now it's right now right now can, can you see Sorry for the interruption, guys. So where I said NPTEL, this was an organized platform IT professional. You will be having a simultaneously like your semester will be going on and the courses will be there like week four, week six, week twelve. And if you are enriched in this NPTEL, you will be getting a good certificate like gold and years. And gold will be very valuable. So and your doubts will be cleared occasionally by your staff members also continuously they will be helping you out and dcs ion this will be it will be enriching our soft skill and particularly will be doing the it's what is course particularly they will develop in like a soft skill like project development the other skills you will be learning to know and value add courses like apart from 
curriculum we will be having each week what two hours we will be having this in this course you will be allowed to learn like iot data science ai many programming language and enhance it so last amazon she telling it's like for women in Nowadays, many previous engineering companies taking diversity orientation, like uh, or preferring more women. They are itself coming forward to enrich your skills, and they will be giving training for two uh, months. Once you get into this uh, two months training, you will be learning many types of skills. And if you are enriched in that skill means, you can pro uh, they will be providing you the job skill from Amazon directly itself. So the next slide is uh, how, what is my experience from SRM? Uh, the SRM, uh, it's not like a will be having simultaneously both theory as well as and lab. So actually to be honest, Till 12th standard, I should be mucking everything. If you give four to six pages, I will be mucking and writing everything. But when it comes for lab section, I will be lagging a lot. I will be like, I can't, I won't be doing particular because I will be seeking help from my friends. I can't able to do. But when I entered into the college, these three years had been transforming that I can also enable to do in like uh, projects and lab materials. I can do that. So it's like always your uh, your and skills. SRM is that curriculum, like both it's available. They are giving equal weightage for theory as well as lab. So whatever you are learning in lab itself, so you know where to apply this skill and where to this and that. So this is, it's like a best platform. It's like a best college where you can enhance your skills and you will be getting all types from the mentors, faculty staffs, faculty uh, you will be getting a mentor from second year itself. They will be guiding you through each and every step. They won't be leaving you if you got failure, if you got uh, loss up on, they will be continuously giving motivation for you. They won't be uh, giving up on you until you reach the particular stage. They will be standing by your own side as their own children. They will be considering you. So I'm by concluding this, I'm telling that opportunity won't be come twice when only one time it will knock the door. So grab that opportunity, use it particularly easily. You will really shine after four years. I can assure you that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sonali. Thank you for sharing your experience in the department as well as in the institution, what you have carried out in co-curricular as well as extracurricular activities. And uh, now I wish to thank uh, our management, Dean Sir, head, head of the department, for permitting us to organize such event, which will be more useful for the upcoming engineers. Uh, thank you, one and all. Uh, Aravindan, sir. Aravindan, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, can you share the feedback link, sir? The feedback link at the end of the day only. Okay, okay, I mean, okay. End of the week of the session. Okay. So thank you, students. Uh, join for tomorrow's uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, participants, for joining. Uh, thank you, participants, for joining for today's session. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have the session on uh, the scope of biomedical engineering in medical field. It's the first session. And the second session is on uh, the contribution of electronics in medical field. So kindly join for the meeting by 9.45 a.m. Thank you. HOD, sir. HOD, sir.
एचओडी सर 